Hey, Lance Egan here with Fly Fish Food with a fly fishing everyday carry. What's in my pack? Dude, that's a big brown bro. Today, I'm gonna go through what I keep in my fly fishing chest pack. This is my chest pack I use every day I'm on the river. This one is an Umqua Overlook. Uh, it's my favorite pack. Yours is probably a little different, but I want to show you what's in mine. I'm not going to have time to show you everything that's in here, but there are a lot of goodies that I think maybe get overlooked and uh, I think might help you out with some, some of your own gear and maybe give you a little more efficient time on the river. So let's start with one of my favorite tools, the catch and release. The catch and release is a release tool that helps you uh, remove the hook from the fish. I carry two sizes of these. Uh, I have the original size and the big bug size. They basically just have different size openings. So for most midges and smaller flies, the original works great. When you're fishing a conehead or a larger beaded fly or even a larger foam dry fly, sometimes they don't fit in the original. That's why I carry the big bug. So I connect them. I use them all the time. I connect them to a retractor so they're always out and ready for me to uh, release a fish. They're really, really cool. One of the, my favorite things about them is they save money on flies. They do that because most of the time if you grab a fly with forceps or pliers, you end up grabbing the body of the fly and that ends up tearing up the fly when you remove it from the fish. What these do is they slide over the body of the fly and they use the bend of the hook to remove the fly. So you're actually just putting pressure on the metal part of the hook rather than kind of grabbing and tearing apart the body. So catch and release tools, those are a couple of my absolute favorite tools on my vest. Let's check, take a look at some fly boxes. I have 12 fly boxes in the front of this pack and I'm not sure, maybe two or three more in the back of it. Uh, one of my favorite boxes is the CNF Design 1506F. I like these because they're really, really light and they hold a ton of flies. There's a flip page in here. They hold over 500 flies in a very small, lightweight, compact package. So I keep a lot of my nymphs in them. I have some small streamers in here. Uh, and another one here I have, I even have some dry flies in. Uh, so I have kind of a, a really well-rounded selection of flies just in a couple of boxes. Again, just in those two alone, I can carry over a thousand flies. Let's go to the back of my pack. So one of my favorite tools to keep my net is a GearKeeper net retractor. This is not just your average retractor. It has a lot more retention, a lot stronger spring. It has a clip that stays on this end, kind of the female end, and then there's a male end that I connect to my net, snaps in place here, hangs on the back of my pack. That way I'm not messing with a clip behind my neck. I'm not trying to put it in a sheath. When I hook a fish, I strip down the line, grab hold of the net, land the fish, take the fish out of the net, and the retractor zips it right back up. Except no substitutes. The gear keeper is the way to go. This very one is almost 20 years old. So they're really durable. They're more expensive than a really cheap uh, retractor, but I think you'll find these are worth their weight in gold. They're really, really durable, last a long, long time. All right, let's move maybe to the front of the pack here. This one's a controversial piece of equipment. This is a throat pump or a stomach pump. I wouldn't recommend using it on every fish. It's not good for the fish, but let's be honest, catching a fish probably isn't good for the fish. But every once in a while, when I want to learn a little bit more about the, what the fish are keying on, I give them a little throat pump. And you use this by putting, putting it in the water, soaking up some of the water into the pump, squeezing it into the fish's mouth and down into their throat, and then releasing the bulb and it sucks whatever they've just been eating most recently into the tube, then you can squeeze it out into your hand or into a dish and inspect it. Uh, for more on that, check out, we have another related video, an Entomology 101 video, so check that out on our channel as well. While we're in the front of the pack, one of my favorite drying materials, this is uh, for, for dry flies, this is Shimazaki Dry Shake. It's a powder and desiccant style floatant, so let's say you've already been fishing, you just caught a fish or you've been fishing for an hour and you haven't, but your fly's waterlogged and you want to rejuvenate it, you pop the cap here, you stick your fly in here, still on the tippet, you don't have to take it off the tippet, you close the lid, you shake it up, I usually tap it to get some of the excess powder down off the fly, pull it out, your fly's going to be a little bit white, you can either blow on it or brush it off with your hands and then just false casting will remove most of the white powder, but the powder helps it float, it has desiccant in there to dry it out, It'll rejuvenate your dry fly and make it float high just like it was brand new out of the box. All right, what else do we have in here? Tippet. You got to have tippet in your vest, right? I keep the most common sizes of tippet that I use right in the very front of the pack. So here I have some 5 and 6X Umqua Phantom X. This is fluorocarbon tippet. It's all I use. Uh, which actually begs the question, I'm curious what all of you use. In the comments below, uh, let me know, do you use 
a particular brand of tippet, or more importantly, do you use fluorocarbon or nylon tippet? Uh, I'm curious to see what most of you end up using. Those are my two most common sizes, five and six. I'll keep heavier stuff like 2X, 3X, 1X, 4X, etc. inside my pack, but I want to keep the sizes I use all the time just in a front pocket so it's easily accessible. Uh, on the other side of this one, I have cider material. I end up doing a lot of nymphing when I'm on the stream. Uh, trout do more than 90% of their feeding subsurface, so nymphing is a great way to maximize your catch. I use a lot of European style techniques. So I use cider material quite often. This is the Umqua 3X. You can see it's got two bright colors there. They're easy to see. One real quick tip, uh, when you're Euro-nymphing, I see a lot of anglers using the same cider for way, way too long. Cider fades. It fades from the sun, it fades from water, diluting the dye. And the harder it is to see, the less strikes you're going to indicate. So every day or every other day at the very least, change out, you don't need to change the whole leader, just change out the very bottom of your Euro leader so you have fresh cider on there. It'll just make it that much easier to see and detect strikes and find your rig. There's tons of other things in the vest. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you don't want to miss out on other cool videos like this, click the subscribe button. So that's my Fly Fish Everyday Carry, What's in My Pack.